Hi there, my name is Thomas Weeks. <laughs> this is the uh, Cyber Range Weekly Workshop, representing both the US Cyber Range and the Virginia Cyber Range. And this is a workshop series we do for teachers to talk about how to use Cyber Range. And specifically in this workshop, we're gonna be talking about CTF, our CTF system. The next few sessions, we're gonna solving challenges together on the Cyber Range CTF, called, it's called Cloud CTF, and we made it in-house, completely serverless, really cool, super scalable. Um, you can register for it now if you want to play along. Go out to weekly workshop of backer.io slash weekly workshop. And you can jump in there, sign in using your um, Google or your Microsoft Azure um, authentication account, OAuth accounts. And make sure you have pop-up blockers disabled for that site. And you might see challenges change from week to week as we add and remove some challenges. So no, don't worry. It's just a, it's just a play along for, uh, for um, educators to kind of get a feel for how the system works. Um, so I'm gonna keep that, that play along CTF link at the bottom as I go so you can, you can hit, it, hit it if you're coming in late or you hadn't got logged in yet. So last week we had an introductory to network, introduction to network challenges. Uh, Dave, Dr. Dave Raymond went over uh, common network challenges and um, in fact, I have our CTF system. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to log in, what logging in looks like since I need to show you the networking anyway. So you go out to that, uh, that short URL at the bottom there, and it will bring you here. You click on enter, use your whatever login you're going to use. I'm going to use my test account. I'm pre authenticated. And here we go. It's Jeopardy style CTF in the following categories cryptography, networking, recon, reverse engineering, web, and cyber trivia. I already solved a couple in crypto a couple weeks ago. Uh, I think Dave solved some in networking. And we're going to be working on web today. We're going to do a quick review from last week um, on networking. Actually, I'm just going to talk real quick about these, the networking challenges, the types of challenges we have here. Uh, most of these challenges include uh, downloading a PCAP file. If you're not familiar with PCAPs, those are the, the files you get recording data um, um, network flow using TCB dump or Wireshark or various other tools can create PCAP files. And then you analyze them using Wireshark typically. Um, some other tools too you can use. Um, so they'll say download this tool. Um, this, these are uh, ethernet and IP and this one's getting MAC addresses. This one's looking at insecure HTTP and uh, actually looking at dissecting web traffic and then other things, other protocols like Telnet things. So most of these are using PCAPs. Our more advanced networking challenges, we do actually have things where you actually hit a live um, server or a live Docker container and interact with it in a certain way. Um, but this week we're going to be talking about web challenges and um, uh, basically walk through some basic hands-on stuff and then talk on, on some low point web challenges and then talk about some, some more advanced um, um, tactics that you can use and tools you can use to solve uh, more advanced um, web-based challenges also. And then that way, next week, I think Dave's going to be back on. He's gone this week, but he's going to be back on talking about reconnaissance and doing recon challenges. So really good stuff. Um, first of all, challenge types for web. Um, your typical easy, uh, basic web challenges, first of all, require an understanding of HTML and how websites actually work. So if you, if you never looked at the source code of a web page, especially if you're working with students, this is a really good place to start. Um, so um, opening up, uh, hitting control U, for example, and you're bringing up the source code of a web page to see the code behind the page. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And then harder challenges require a little bit better understanding of how web, web uh, applications actually work. Um, there's static, kind of static content. We're going to look at some static content here in a minute. And then there's dynamic content, which starts usually getting into scripting and things. We're not going to get too much into that this week because we only have about 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, but we're going to show uh, show some samples there. Um, so different approaches to solving these things, like I said, examining the source page, opening the developer panel to, to look at the in-depth interactions between your web client and the web server, and then actually looking at examining network traffic um, that's flowing across that using the developer panel. We're not going to get too deep into that because it's a bit of a rabbit hole, um, but um, also other things like looking for um, you know robot files and directory traversal and things like that, that, that can uh, kind of take your game to the next level. Um, basic inspection of HTML pages, you need to know about, and students need to know about specifically, um, the structure of HTML. 
So you'll have opening tags and closing tags. If you've never looked at HTML before, so this is an opening HTML tag. There's the closing HTML tag. Here's the opening head, closing head. And then the body is where the main meat of the displayed content actually resides. So you see an opening body and a closing body tag. Same thing for the um, for the headers, larger, larger text. We'll have a H1, H1 opening and closing tags. Um, an unsorted list for a list of items or bullets and things like that. Um, it's very, very useful. And uh, that's that's a simple static page, just uh, standard static. I say static, it's not changing. It's not running. So there's not some executable running in the background or some kind of script running versus more modern dynamic pages that are using Java, JavaScript, things like that, or JavaScript that download. Java is typically code that runs on the server. JavaScript is typically uh, a different type of code that runs on the client, the web client, your browser itself. Um, so um, those are some other things you need to be aware of when you're getting into looking at HTML pages. Um, bringing this up, just uh, the page source like this, you normally in Chrome, Chrome, Firefox, and I think, I think in even an Edge, you can get there by hitting Control U to bring up the source code of a page. And we're going to do that in just a second. And then a more advanced mode is called the developer mode, where it's interactively working with the page source and flipping through the different pieces of the code and how it actually interacts with the server in real time. Um, so you get some really, really useful metrics and controls and uh, inspection of HTML and pages. And we're going to look at that right now. Let me flip over here to some of our challenges. I mean, you can even look at the source code of the cyber range. If you hit control U, here's the source code. It's not very much source code for such a complex uh, game system, but it's because it's all running as backend code um, in a combination of CSS and JavaScript that's running all the stuff in the background. But this is the basic HTML itself. Just like I said, you'll see that there's the beginning HTML, the heading, header area, a script area, loading up some JavaScript, um, some meta tags, and then here's the body. This is the main thing. This right here is running JavaScript is rendering all of this cool looking stuff. So really the bulk of our web page is really in these back and back in JavaScript files. So we need to know about that as well as what a comment looks like. Is this a comment that starts with a less than greater, uh, less than exclamation, then your text and then the closing tag dash dash greater than. Anything between those tags is not rendered or executed by the browser, it's just delivered to the client and then you could have to see it by doing a control U. Otherwise it's not rendered in your web page. So that's good stuff to know. If you want to know more about this kind of stuff, I really recommend students and teachers alike both get into this. You can go up to uh, um, HTML examples and it'll typically take you right out to W3 schools. This is a really, really good resource I send people to for who are just learning HTML and making web page. In fact, using this, I really like uh, uh, if, if teachers are able to set up like a little laptop server in their classroom or Raspberry Pi and have the students create web pages. Um, they can go out here to W3 schools and practice and create an HTML page and then boom, this is how it renders. Put that on, put this, this stuff in a index.html file on the server and they've made their first web page and they have them starting putting graphics and sound and, and animated GIFs and stuff in there and it's, it's a lot of fun. So I highly recommend that. That's a really useful tool. That's w3schools.com. Um, so in our categories here, our web challenges, our first challenge is the uh, nemesis. We're going to take the easy one here. This is a challenge. What is the secret message hidden in the close, uh, near the close body tag on the secret scrolls website? Okay, we now know what a body tag is. It's not a, like a dead body toe tag. This is a body tag in HTML. So here's the web page that comes up. And we do a control U, the closing tag. Here's the opening tag. This is all CSS. This is kind of rendering graphics, uh, rendering uh, settings. Uh, CSS, CSS, here we go. So there's the opening body tag. And here's the uh, closing body tag. And here's our secret message. So there we go. So it looks like this might be be our flag maybe, go back over here, pop it in, submit. Yay, I just got it. Okay, 10 points, good job. Um, so that's, um, can you all, can you all still hear me? My headphones kicked out for a second. Can you yes. hear me? Okay. Yes. 
All right, so that was the first one. Though that was just looking at HTML source. Just going here again, hitting Control U, bring up the source, and then looking at what's going on behind the scenes. Okay, and this one has has several challenges, and we'll look at another one here in a second. Uh, robots.txt. This is an, another concept of how websites work, not just a web server. In fact, you could browse all day on a on um, various. Okay, I can't hear you. Um, spiders. We lost your audio for a second. Can you hear me now? Yes. Huh. Okay, didn't change anything. That's weird. Okay. Hmm. No. All right, I will continue on. So, robot files, you heard me talk about robot files? Yes. Maureen? Okay, so yeah, so robot files are files that are not for humans. They are for spiders and web spiders and search engines that are scouring the web 24 hours a day. It's basically a way uh, for you to tell web spiders and, and search engines, hey, don't hit these parts of my website, either because they're a security risk, sensitive data, or you might crash my system. So for example, if you, you have you know dynamic, dynamic content that creates new, you know, sub web URLs, you don't want it to like take down your system by filling up all your system's memory and by hitting an infinite loop. So people will typically put things in robots, text to files that exclude databases and exclude special URLs or hidden areas of the website. Um, so I would not really a good thing to use for security, but some people do. So if we go out here to Secret Squirrel, it's, I think it's, that's the same website, yep. Go to your Secret Squirrel. And robots, the way robots work is, and if you're ever wondering, wondering it's HTML, robots.txt. You can just search, Google it, and it'll tell you, or introduction to robots.txt. And it'll go through and tell you exactly how they're used, um, where they are. They're always in, uh, in the top, e either the top level directory or the, or the directory that you um, want the site to pay attention for. And if we go in here and just add, robots.txt, then we say, hey, no matter what user agent you are, in other words, if you're Firefox, Chrome, Edge, what a WebKit, Apple, whatever, um, or Google, for example, don't search slash secrets. So if we take this slash secrets, copy and paste this on the end, replace the robots, and we'll be able to traverse that directory that is unsearchable by Google, for example. And there's our flag. So we go ahead and copy that out. And this is just a real simple example of how robots can be used to include or exclude um, certain directories. Now, where's my game? My game is right here. Paste this in, submit. And there we go, 35 points. All right, so that's kind of how that works. Um, some other th places you'll see people hide things and websites and uh, um, especially with web challenges is um, this using this method. Um, this one's called Bravo for no, there's sometimes some of our, our challenges, this will be a hint. It's not really a hint in this case. We just have different destinations called Bravo, Charlie, Delta. Um, so we, those are just the URLs. Um, but it says perhaps we can direct your attention over here. Anytime you see the phrase direct or redirect with regards to web, that means something special. I'm gonna go ahead and go out here to this website and you'll see, I mean, up this, oops. And I went to bravo.virginiecyberings.net and it added slash login. Whenever the system, the server changes the path you went to, um, there's several ways of doing that. One of those ways is called a redirect. Sometimes you'll see this when people are making you switch from HTTP colon slash slash to HTTPS to force you to use a secure website. Your bank will do this. If you go to mybank.com, it'll redirect you to HTTPS colon slash slash mybank.com. So you'll be encrypted from the get go. So you don't have to think about it. Um, in the same way, this site is 
changing our the base page, which is looking for typically an index.html file, to login.php. This is typical of PHP pages. They use a web redirect. Um, so let's take this first whack. Let's do a control U and see what we can see. Source code. I don't see anything special here. Um, although, what do you all notice? I see an opening HTML tag, opening H3, closing H3, form, form. I see no body. And what else do we not see? Maureen, you're probably, you're probably privy to this. If we scroll down, see these line numbers are, just keep going. We see that here's the closing HTML way down here, out of the way. And it says, this will keep hackers out. They can't even view our index without being redirected. Oh, so there's some kind of redirection going on here. Now, redirecting from the browser is kind of tricky. Depends on what kind of redirection it is. You can do it at different levels, at HTML or at the meta tag or at the server regex level, which you can't really stop. So there's several ways of redirecting someone from one page to another web page. Um, in this case, um, you could do it using, using developer mode called hitting F12 and stopping redirection. And we're gonna show this a little bit later, but that's overly complex for what all we need to do is if we need to stop a redirect, I like to do this from the command line. This is one of the examples where I like to stop to the command line and let's take a look at it using, um, um, I think Dave prefers curl. So I'm gonna hit curl. There's a tilde there. Curl, silent, bravo, net. Okay, I just scrolled a bunch of stuff. If I scroll up, I see some kind of hint maybe. Okay, I'm gonna try this. Try the same curl command, slash, maybe the index page. I don't know. Oh, okay. That was it. That was it. So this is the, it looks like the page we could have hit, but we were re redirected. So and once we, we, once we point directly to this PHP page, then we get the flag. So in this case, I can copy the whole flag or just the contents of the flag. And there's a couple other ways of doing this too. Um, there's an e-link, a links method. Links is another another web client I like, command line I like to use. Um, sometimes it does things in a more simple way than curl. In this case, I could just tell it, um, hey, don't do any redirection, just to send me to there. And it spits out the same thing. So, in fact, I wonder what happened if I did. Yeah, that just sends me to that. And if I do this, same thing. So it gives me a hint and then I go to the hint and I get, I get it, okay. So go to that destination, I get the flag, pop back over here, put the answer in, submit. And there we go, we got our 75 points. So there's three of the simple examples we're gonna actually show uh, hands-on. Um, some of the other ones that we're going to talk about real quickly, um, some more advanced web challenges, harder word challenges, they really require a deeper understanding, which builds on this understanding. If you don't have basic understanding of HTML source and structure and how to work with it, then you really can't get in the more advanced stuff. You'll just be kind of shooting in the dark, trying random things and not really learning, just you're rolling the dice. So get the basics down. But after that, you want to have your students start looking at more advanced uh, topics such as directory traversal. For example, if a web server is not secured, you may be able to issue it a dot dot, you know, that's parent directory, dot dot parent directory slash Etsy slash password and look at the user listing of the, of the system. That's bad. That's a really bad information leak. Um, that's, by the way, that's that's locked down automatically in most modern web servers, but um, uh, you get some consultants that do some bad stuff and you end up with those kind of holes. Um, you were all perimeter attacking. So if you're including usernames and passwords, for example, in the actual URL, um, then it's very easy to just go there and start plinking and playing around and um, see what you can see. Um, a lot of, I've seen a lot of government websites get taken 
uh, hacked because of this. You know, that's a lot of the info, the, the social security links and credit card scan, uh, um, um, harvesting we see is using these kind of attacks because it's written, um, the website's written poorly and doesn't hasn't passed like a, a WASP security checks and stuff like that. Um, so using, like I shared, showed before, using links or curl to examine uh, full responses. Sometimes you want to see the, for example, the header, or you want uh, no redirection, or um, you want to be able to do something, you know, uh, you know, do an HTTP post, for example. Those are things that you need to you drop to the command line and use uh, links or curl. Curl is more, uh, gives you more, um, it's much more of a kind of a stick shift way of doing things. Um, you can control more aspects of the client server interaction versus links, which is more of a automatic kind of a, uh, more of an automatic experience where it just acts like a text-based web client and you don't have as much quite as control. Uh, both those are really good to use. Um, if you get more advanced stuff, you want to do man in the middle attacks um, and be able to inject things, you want to look at using something like Burp Suite, which is a kind of a local proxy you run that'll act like a man in the middle that'll let you uh, do much more low-level things. Um, other things you want to explore is PHP JavaScript vulnerabilities. Uh, look at scripts within the HTML. Sometimes in the in the meta tag, you'll see actual script content included in the web page. You can start playing with that, and you know, play with databases and things. If something's written written really poorly, which a lot of things are, sadly, um, you can start playing with that. Uh, SQL injection. This is something um, a little more advanced, but um, you want to probably teach databases before you start doing SQL injection. Just doing SQL injection, not understanding how the database behind it works, is um, um, probably a bad idea. You want to spend a little bit of time learning at least some basics about mice. For example, setting up MySQL, you can do that for free. Uh, SQL though is the same as for Microsoft SQL Server um, and various other SQL databases. Um, SQL is a generic um, structured query language for talking to databases. So MySQL is the cheapest way of doing that, now called also MariahDB. You can install those for free and set up an Apache web server and have your own LAMP, that's Linux, Apache, MySQL, P PHP um, website, and uh, start playing with connecting the web to the, to the database and learning SQL. Once you learn a little bit about SQL, then you'll learn the commands you give it. And then, of course, then you can start doing SQL injections. So you got to jump through a couple of hoops before you get to this level. But I highly recommend that because it's very, very much uh, looked at when you're looking at securing websites. And then uh, things like command injection, actually sending like commands to the to the underlying operating system, escaping out of jails and things like that, and sending bash commands and Python commands to the operating system. You can do some really dangerous stuff there. So those are all just a kind of a kind of a bird's eye view of kind of web challenges from um, from simple to advanced, to static to dynamic, and uh, some of the tools you want to use and some of the tools you want to learn about and be able to teach in the classroom. Um, before you can get really into the kind of professional level uh, penetration testing and uh, web hardening and things like that, um, that's uh, those are the those are the things you want to kind of attack and the kind of things you'll see in a lot of our CTFs that taking you from kind of the, some of the basic to the more advanced topics. Okay, that's about it. Uh, there's some some knowledge base references to our. Um, to our CTF system, uh, some videos, and our customer support information. Any questions? Anyone online asking any questions? You can stop the recording if you like. <laughs>